Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Emily and this is my late life lesbian journey. On my channel, I discuss and share my journey and process of going from being married to a man, getting divorced, and coming out as a lesbian. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. Please subscribe so you get notified whenever I make new videos. And for those of you who have been following, thank you and welcome back. So today in this video, um, I had a request a while ago um, by someone asking for Michelle and I to talk about and share sort of like our early stages of dating and what that was like for us. So I thought we would just make a video to discuss some mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, this is Michelle. She's my fiance, future wife. Is that what it means? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so yeah, our first stages of dating. I mean, should we go all the way back to like, you know, connecting on Bumble? Yeah, you met on Bumble. Is it like this denial stage? The denial stage. Yeah, the denial stage. What do you mean? When we were going to be friends and stuff. Oh, yeah. So we met on Bumble and you were the girl. I was the girl. So I reached out to you. Mm -hmm. I did. Oh, yeah. She had something in her profile about um, curing hiccups. So I think that that was what I asked her about. I was like, tell me more about this. 100% success rate at curing hiccups. Still to this day. Yeah. 100%. Like, and she can cure your hiccups. It's a great little trick. There's actually, I have a video of you curing mine. Yeah, that won't, we won't show that. Nope. But anyways, um, so yeah, I reached out, so we started talking. And then you liked that I had a master's degree. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which kind of backfired on her because I got a little snarky about it. Because I personally feel like uh, your college education and the degree that you have doesn't necessarily dictate how intelligent you are. And so... But I saw it as <laughs> someone who gets a master's is dedicated and furthers themselves to, you know, get whatever certification or whatever. It could have been anything. It doesn't have to be a master's. If yeah. you just are always curious about yeah, life and education and yeah. getting everything you need. I don't know. It's just, I like it when people don't just stop. Like they want to do more and a mm -hmm. master's is doing more. Just like how Emily now she does more, but more life coaching sort of style. Yeah. With helping others. I mean, I've always been the do more type of a person, but you know, yeah. So anyways, but you can only put so much in a profile. Yeah. Um, so she liked that at a master's. And um, I don't know, we were chatting back and forth. And then she also ended up sharing with me that she had been married to a man before and had a couple kids. And so th the time her and I connected was like right after I had gone through like a period of time where like I had dealt with a lot of hot and cold people and just like things were not working out. And like I'd meet somebody and it seemed like it would go really well and I'd be interested. And then they just like ghost. And so I was really about ready to just like give up and take a break from the dating apps. But I told myself, I was like, you know, you never know who's going to. So this is kind of interesting too. I was like, I told myself, you never know like when somebody new might come online and like list themselves or you know as being list available myself, list, list like it's a craigslist hey but you did didn't you say woman it was like seeking woman it was that night because you actually had like tried dating men again after mm -hmm. coming out of a lesbian relationship to figure things out for yourself mm -hmm. i wasn't and sure if it was the person or just you yeah just me <laughs> it's just her <laughs> i found out real quick that's maybe a whole other story. I don't want to do that You don't story. have to do that story. That's fine. Um, but you, like said, you had just changed your dating profile from, like, to include, like, interested in women. Mm -hmm. And then we met. So my hanging on there and giving it, you know, one more shot paid off. Anyways, so at that time, like, so she told me this stuff. And I got excited because not only was she like this other late lifer who had kind of had the same experience she lived like what five miles from my house like I figured out and so for me I was like well okay you know what even if nothing happens like we can at least be friends but I guess that was like very devastating to Michelle because she was very excited and yeah yeah 
hopeful for more than that. But I didn't know that. We hadn't even met yet. We were just talking. That's why you're on dating apps. Yeah. So you could just, I was just there just for a connection of a friendship. Well, I, that's what you're there for too, right? That is what I had been dealing with with people. So I just didn't want to get my hopes up. No, you didn't deal with that. You dealt with ghosting yeah. and hot and cold. Yeah. But anyway, so we ended up meeting and I don't know, we, we just made plans to meet up and we had like a really good date. Um, I'll, I'll share this part of it for myself. So this is like a, like a personal thing in dating and all of that. You know, I know I talked about like the relationship that I have with my ex-husband and the the day I met my ex-husband, I like had this connection. I had this knowing like that this person was special. And so when I started dating in the lesbian community again, it was always really hard for me to meet people because I wanted to experience that again. Like I, I wanted, but you know, I tried to say, well, you know, not all relationships work out that way. And you know, sometimes it takes time. And so when I wouldn't feel that way, I'd always like kind of rationalize it. But when I met Michelle, like I had that feeling again, like this, like you hugged me and it was like just the best hug. And like, I don't know, I just like felt something like how I felt before. And that was like very exciting to me. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a really good hug. I was just nervous. <laughs> nervous, but like excited. Yeah. You had a lot of corny jokes. That's me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we had drinks and dinner and I didn't want the night to end. So we went axe throwing, which was fun. And then um, walked out to the cars, to our cars for the end of the evening. And um, I wanted her to, I wanted her to make the first move. I really wanted to kiss her. And, and, and so did we kiss on the first date? Of course we kissed on the first date. <laughs> she kissed me. I did. If she, if she wouldn't have, I would have kissed her. But you kissed me first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was great. Why well, I'm the man, apparently, according to Bumble. So <laughs> I had to make the first move. I guess so. But... 90-10. 90-10? Yeah, like Hitch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was cute. <laughs> um, yeah, so then anyways, after that, we went our separate ways. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, when did we see each other again? Well, you went to the cabin. Oh, I did. Yeah, I think we had our kids that week because I took my son with me. Because we met on a thir Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. And then the next day we had our kids and I went to my parents' cabin. But we talked and I called her, mm -hmm. which... Yeah. Like old school, no text. Yeah. It was like after it was in the evening, we talked to what, like one o'clock in the morning or something? With voices. With voices. With voices. Yeah. Not texting. Talked. Yeah. And that should be like a like a level of relationship dating. Yeah. Now that you like I know, I feel like it is. <laughs> like that you call on the phone instead Have of you just guys text. Talked on the phone yet? That was kind of like a, a qualifi like a you said that. Like a qualification or something? Like something that I, I wanted to be sure I could have a conversation on the phone with somebody? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that. And then got back from the cabin and, um, oh yeah, I came over to your house. Mm -hmm. It was You had your kids though. So what was that? Like, oh, I guess like Monday or Tuesday? Yeah. Got the kids to bed. Came over. Yeah, I don't remember if it was Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. So this is something really cute and sweet that I loved was that when I saw her again and like, you know, I came to her house, knocked on the door, like opened the door, let me in and she kissed me. And I loved that. Like, it's just something so simple, but I had dated other people like in, in like on the second date, you know, like you'd kissed or something like on the first date or whatever period of dating, like where you had already kissed, but then you see the person again. And I'd always want to like go in to kiss them. But there would just be this like awkward body language where it was like, we couldn't kiss until later or something. But it was like, I saw her and like, she just kissed me. And I, I loved that because it was like what I wanted to have. Like, yeah, we already kissed once. Why do we have to go around and like wait until like the end of the night or something again? So I thought that was really cute. Just the things that 
people do that affect the other one in some way. Yeah. But you have no idea. No. So it's a little moment. Yeah. But yeah, so that was our second date. And then after that, honestly, I don't even really, I think pretty much any time we didn't have kids, we were together and like doing stuff, getting together. And yeah. And then, what was it, even just like a couple weeks in and our kids met? Or maybe it was like a week and a half? Mm Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about that? You don't want to talk about it. I didn't. I was, had reserves about the kids meeting. But not for like the reasons you would think. Yeah. Not, not because like relationship wise, because figured, you know, because we're just going to be friends. So the kids can always still play together if we're just friends. You live that down. No. It might be in my wedding vows. Friends forever. Friends forever. <laughs> you can get the necklaces and they can yeah. like go together. Uh-huh. It says BFFs. Uh-huh. I might have just kicked the camera. But, but yeah. No, I'm, no, I'm not in it anymore. No, you're in it. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah. She convinced me otherwise. Mm-hmm. So we had like a picnic. And... No, that wasn't the first one. Yeah, it was. It was at the playground. No, it was the gym. You told me to bring oh. Reeve up to the gym. You're right. Yeah. And then I think it was, like, the next day or something we had, or, like, a, later that weekend or something, we took them on a picnic. Because it was, like, we, we she would do this open gym thing where the kids could just go and play. And so she was, like, well, hey, if you want, like, bring your son and meet us up here, which was great. It was, like, a great kind of experience for them to just play, and but it was, like, out with other kids. And was that the night that the little girl asked us? Mm-hmm. We went to the gym a couple times, and one of the nights, this little girl was probably like, what, like four? Didn't she ask if, like, I think that was why the night. there were two mommies or something? Yeah, something like that. And yeah, then... which was so interesting because literally, like, we had dated, we hadn't made anything, like, official. It was still just, like, it was dates. official in our heart. It was, it was. Um, we had this little girl came and asked, like, like are, like, are you both their mommies or something like that? And I'm, like, wide-eyed because not only had we not, like, clarified or made anything, like, official between us, but I'm, like, this little girl is asking and her mom's over here. And I'm, like, what, what do I say? What do I do? What do I, you know, how do I handle this? Because I don't want to say something that the mom's going to get, like, upset about. But then the mom over her, she's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, and, like, took her, and it kind of just, like, ended before I could ever really give her an explanation, but I don't know, maybe I even said, like, well, I'm his mommy, and she's, like, their mommy, or something like that. Something. But I don't know, yeah. So it's just interesting that this little girl seemed to pick up on yeah. the vibe of things, so. um, Yeah, and then... I don't know. It just sort of went from from there. Our kids were hanging out. We were hanging out. Started making plans. It was shortly after that, that uh, honestly, it was what, like the next week? Or it might have that even you, been that weekend. I don't know. It, it was like two, two and a half weeks in. And like you asked me to be your girlfriend officially. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And in full disclosure and confession, I ended up telling her that I loved her. Which... If you watch another one of my videos, I talk about the whole lesbians moving fast thing. And, you know, I guess you could say that my feelings were very fast. But it all worked out. Because <laughs> we're together. And planning to get married. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, oh, other kind of fun fact is that when we started dating, I had actually had plans to go on another date that I actually think I had set up before we even started talking, but it was like the timing with this other girl, like we couldn't make it all work until Mm -hmm. later on. But after, I think it was like just after, after our first time or second time getting together. Yeah, second time. Yeah. I canceled the date with the other girl because I just knew I wouldn't be interested. I knew that it would be a waste of both of our time. So she ain't got what I got. Yeah. Yeah. So that was it. And then so let's see. Yeah, we kept dating. When did I officially like move in? Well, it was March. So I guess it was like six months 
that like I'd really started like we decided like we were gonna end up moving in together and I started kind of moving some things over here so I think it was like spring break last year that I ended up like moving some of like Reeves things over and some of my things over but then I didn't officially move everything because I closed on the I sold my house in June so and, and the intent wasn't even to move that fast it just so happened to that someone was you, you always mentioned like yeah. selling your house to a certain individual and then they uh, they were like looking at the same time and so it just so happened yeah it that, all like worked out yeah it yeah. worked out like we weren't like oh my god I guess I guess you can move in with me or something like that like that was the plan all along it yeah. just got expedited a little bit not yeah. in a bad way no not in a bad way uh-uh. I think yeah. we've been talking about like we knew it was kind of like the plan or what we wanted mm-hmm. and yeah it just sort of all fell into place because I also said I didn't want to like officially move my son out of his house until like the end of the school year like I wanted to make sure that he was done and you know it wasn't like a transition right during the school year mm-hmm. but um and yeah so it worked out because it was the end of the school year and closed my house like in June June yeah and then we were done. It was the end. Yeah. So then he started up his other school and it's been going great. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I got anything else like from our beginning stages. I mean, I feel like that's like just our very initial beginning stages. And I don't know. Did you answer the individual's questions? I think so. I mean, whoever asked the question just wanted to know like details of how it was for us. But so another really interesting topic and I might make a video about this in general but um it was just so different being with you I feel like both of us in those beginning stages almost even helped each other work through like some past traumas we had a lot of like very intense moments of like they're just very emotional you know I I felt like when I was with you like you saw me and you heard me and you got me and you I still do. Exactly. <laughs> but you, like, understood some of the hurt and things that I had experienced that, you know, occasionally caused me, like, have my guard up with things. And, like, you just showed me a lot of, like, grace and patience and understanding, which was just really nice to have. And I feel like, for those of you in relationships or looking for relationships, you know, That's like when you know it's like a good thing because, you know, I was totally in those relationships where I would try to be open and be vulnerable and share like pains or traumas that I had. And I just felt like I wasn't met with any understanding or I wasn't met with like kindness. And yeah, it's like you just were so different with that. So I like talking deep. Yeah. I like hearing all the vulnerabilities. Yeah. So, I don't know. Just something to maybe look for. Go ahead. I was say, like, I just want you to be you. Yeah. You don't have to hide. Mm-hmm. Any of it. No. Mm. Love you. Love you. Okay, anyways. Oh, I love her a lot. <laughs> you cry a little. Am I? Yes. I was almost going to, but I kind of, like, reined it in. You so it in. I sucked it in. Just... <laughs> Suck the tears back up. <sighs> yeah. So, I don't know. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you, hopefully it was entertaining. I don't know. It's but probably like 20 minutes long. I feel like this was really long, but I don't know. Some of you have asked me to make longer videos, so here you go. <laughs> I prefer to keep them short and sweet, but it's just easy to talk a lot about you and us. So, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. Um leave your comments below any other questions or any other things you want videos on um and i'll see what i can do about that and just a reminder if you haven't subscribed please subscribe you can also follow me on instagram at ec bettis and check the description below um, for some extra links such as the late life lesbian community that i run and host and um some one-on-one coaching that i do so thank you guys again and see you soon in my next video